Thank you for this day, dear Lord. Thank you for another day's journey. Thank you, dear Lord, for the congregation known as Unity, dear Lord. Continue to keep your arms all around us, dear Lord. Build us up where we're weak. Prop us up on every leading side. Now, Lord, be not only with us today. Be with all churches, dear Lord, where men of God are daring to stand before the sacred desk, dear Lord, declaring to an unsaved world that Jesus is real, Lord, preaching encouragement to the saints and uh, Jesus to the sinners. Touch today, Lord. Be with those people who are not in the mind, frame of mind, to even think about church today, dear Lord. Be with them, dear Lord. I pray that they'll accidentally hear a sermon today on YouTube or Facebook or on the radio or on TV, dear Lord, with the convicting power of the saved blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord, I pray, dear Lord, touch today as only you can touch in Jesus' holy and righteous name. Not only here in Sacramento, but all over the world, dear Lord. I'm praying that people get saved in the name of Jesus. Touch today in the name of Jesus. We pray today. Touch today, dear Lord, as only you can touch. Thank you today, dear Lord, in the name of Jesus. Lord, bless our uh, wine and bread, dear Lord. We'll be serving the Lord's Supper here in a little while, dear Lord. Bless it in the name of Jesus. Oh, in the name of Jesus, we pray today. Amen. Thank God. For those that are watching on YouTube, we're back and we are in still where we left you in the book of uh, excuse me, Romans, the eighth chapter. Romans, the eighth chapter, chapter eight of the book of Romans, pro Romanos, the epistle of Paul to Rome. Oh, what a great time we've been having. Hit that subscribe button. Let us know what you're thinking of the word and get, keep your Bibles open and be with us in this as we continue in this journey in the book of Romans. Amen. Romans. For those of you inside the congregation and church, the eighth chapter, and we're going to go verses 35 and 36, but leave your Bibles open because we'll be making frequent alliterations back into the word of the true and the living God. Verse 35, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness, or peril, or sword, as it is written, for your sake we are killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. And we're just going to center in on those two verses, and that's all an important chapter in the book of Romans, the eighth chapter, verse 35 and 36, and we'll use for a subject, who shall separate us from the love of of God. Who shall separate us from the love of God? Or, or as it says here in the verse 35, the love of Christ. The love of Christ. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Do you know, is there anybody in here today who knows that Jesus loves you? And there's nobody, nothing on this earth that will love you more than the love of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. There's nothing. There's nothing. There's nothing, nothing we can grasp after, nothing we can run after is like the love of Christ. But yet and still, people today act like Christ doesn't love them. We live in a time where People are, here's a big word for you, uh, coming out of the psychology area, are dissecting, they're spending too much time dissecting the word of God. There's too much time where people usurping, another big word for you, usurping the word of God. We live in a time where people are depressed. And I'm going to talk about that for a moment this morning. Was what do you really have to be depressed for? Don't you know Christ loved you? He died on that cross. We're given to celebrate Easter week here this week. This, this Resurrection Sunday, next Sunday, where he 
bodily died on that cross, was taken off of that cross, put in a tomb that wasn't even his tomb, it was another man's tomb, put in a tomb with a, with a seal, put across a stone across that tomb and a seal with a Roman seal, meaning nobody could mess with him. But yet and still, he died on that cross, but on the third day morning, he came out of that tomb, that, 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 that stone was rolled away, that seal was broken. He got up with all power in his hands. Don't you know how much he loved you? Don't you know how much he cares? That's right, Zoe. And all power in his hands. But people today don't seem to be care about that. We live in a hyper-narcissistic society where it's all about moi. It's all about moi. It's all about moi. And not about anything or anybody else, but my brothers and sisters, it isn't about you. It's about the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As we look at this, still this all-important eighth chapter, verse 28 says, And we know that all things work together for good to those who what? Who love God to those who are called according to his purpose. Now, the world will look at that as if it's all things work together for them. It doesn't matter about them. Who gives a hair of beans about them? It's not about them. It's about all those, listen to the words, who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's about God's purpose on this earth. How many of you realize that you're all on this earth for a short period of time and you're on here for God's purpose? It's not about your purpose. It's not about my purpose. It's not about the president's purpose, the governor's purpose, or uh, some famous entertainer or some famous athlete. It's about our God's purpose. I was watching the, the, the final four uh, this week, bits and pieces of it, and I was just really taken aback out some arrogance some of our young men and were out there playing basketball. They are doing something that God gave them the ability. He only gave about 600 people on the whole planet the ability to play basketball at that level. And you think instead of giving God the praise, you had some out there talking about Ramadan. You had some out there talking about it was all about them and bad trash talking their uh, opponents. My brothers and my sisters, that's because we live in this narcissistic society where it's all about us, but it's not all about us. It's about our Lord. It's about our Savior, Jesus Christ, who died on that cross for us. That means we are to have love one another for our fellow human beings because it's not about us. It's about our Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Verse 33, still in the eighth chapter. Who shall bring a charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is it then who condemns? It is Christ who died. And furthermore, is also who is even at the right hand of God who makes intercessions for us. That means 2,000 years to now, he's at the right hand of God for us. Do we understand that he's at the right hand hand of God for us. I know this isn't popular preaching anymore, but it's, here it is. I'm still going to preach the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He's at the right hand of the Father for us right now. Do we understand that? That means he was at the right hand. Let me see. However old I was in 1965 when we marched into First Baptist Tabernacle Church, he was still at the right hand of the Father. When I think about my mother and father who were married uh, in San Francisco in the early 50s, he was still at the right hand of the Father. During World War I, he was still at the right hand of the Father. During slavery time, he was at the right hand of the Father. When people came to the Americas, call herself uh, discovered America, but the indigenous people were already here. He was still at the right hand of the Father. He's at the right hand of the Father still today for you and for me because he's God. Hallelujah. Thank God for God the Father, God the Son, 
God the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. At the right hand, even as God who makes intercessions for us, that means he's still praying. He's still interceding for us. Can you imagine that? He's interceding. Some people today are too arrogant to give God some praise. Hallelujah. Every time y'all get, get to praise, I give him some praise. If you saw me early around 7.45 this morning, walking over here with my robe and pajama bottoms on, and turn the heat on here so it'll be comfortable for you. Anybody that would see me, what, what was he thinking about? I was thinking about, thank God for another day. Thank God that he saved my soul. Thank God that he kept me. Thank God nobody broke in my house and killed me last night. Thank God he kept my children. Thank God he kept my grandchildren. Thank God he kept my nieces and nephews. Thank God he kept my sister and my brothers. Thank God he's kept my cousins. Thank God he's kept unity another day. Thank God you all are under to Thank God for what he's done for you because nobody and nothing else on this earth can do for you what God can and does do for you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah today. So that, that brings us to verse 35. Who shall separate us from the love? I'm going to circle that love of God. Now in Christian circles, we tend to use the word, I'm going to get technical now, agape love. Agape is the Greek for love. And we're not talking about, because there are other types of love. You have uh, philo love, which is the love of brotherly love. You have eros love, which is a sexual love somebody has. When we get to agape, it's, 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 it's a godly love. But we want to take it just a step further this morning. In the Hebrew, it is chest. A chest love. Love that goes one way and comes back another way. Do we understand it? Because some of us don't have that kind of love. Some of us got that love. Yeah, we love somebody, but as long as they care about us, as long as it suits our fancy, as long as we want to do it because we feel like doing it. But a godly love is truly a chest love. It's a love that was that was started with me. God started with me on January the 4th, 1956 when I was born. He was loving me even then. And up until today, 67 years later, he's still loving me. Do we understand that love? That's the kind of love that God has for us. It's a chest love. It's a love that goes one way and comes back another way. Hallelujah. Chest love. It's a love that is uh, uh, ongoing. It's a love that is strong. It's a love that never withdraws. It's a love that twangs. It never withdraws. And God's love never withdraws from us. Now, we'll, we'll withdraw from one another in a minute. Some of you say, well, no, I, no, 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 Pastor, I have. No, you want your over and slap somebody right now, slap the bejeebies out of them, and see how long that love lasts. We slap God all the time. When we lie on people, when we hurt each other, when we don't follow his will, when we don't praise and worship him, when we when we mean to each other, when we're hateful to one another, that's a conditional love. But thank God our love doesn't, God doesn't love like this. No matter what we've done in our life, God still loves us. He still cares for us. Doesn't matter what we've done, it doesn't matter what mistakes we've made. God still loves us. Do we understand that? Now I want to get to when we're talking about this twenty love, this 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 deep love, this interceding love, this love that goes one way and goes back the other way. Um, here it is. We have a problem in our society. Stay with love for a moment because people now are depressed over everything and Paul anything. They're depressed. I'm depressed. Our young people, I want to say, what do you have to be depressed about? You are more blessed than your mother. You're more blessed than your grandmother. You're certainly more blessed than your great-grandmother. And then your great-great-grandmother, you're more blessed than her, than your great-great-great-grandmother, who could have been a slave, who could have been an, an indigenous person, uh, who died very young, uh, you're more blessed 
than they are. You have more money than they have. You have more things open, but yet you're still depressed. Don't you know God loves you? And if you love God and God loves you, that love will keep you going no matter what. People say, I'm depressed. People say, well, Pastor, don't you get depressed? No, I don't get depressed. I get, excuse my language, I get pissed off at some people sometimes. Oh, that, that, I hope that didn't shake your fingers, Sister Carol, for understanding that. I get upset at certain circumstances. I can be down about certain things, but I never let myself go to get depressed because God loves me and I love God. Do we understand that? People say to me, I've had this, people say, well, how is it that you literally, figuratively buried people in your family? Yeah, well, yeah, that was tough. My grandmother, Rita Dozier, that was tough. My uh, father, that was real tough. My mother, ultra tough. My sibling, and it's something about when you lost a sibling, that's a part of you that's gone. It's, 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 it's gone. I still have my brothers, I still have Ginger, but we lost one of our siblings. It's a part of you and it hurts. Lost my nephew Theron and other family members. But here it is. I still have to know God loves me. And I love God. And no matter what happens, in this little bit of time we're here on this earth, we've got to love each other because that's what we are to do as followers and believers and disciples of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Jesus Christ, Son of the living God. We've got to learn to hold on to each other no matter what. I to pray you don't understand I'm depressed. I mean, you don't have nothing to be depressed on. That's a trick. Hear me now, some of you that know some of this, you need to show them this tape. That's a trick of the devil. John 8, 44 said, Satan is the father of what? All lies. He was a liar from the beginning. He was a liar and from the beginning and still he's a liar today. Satan, the devil, is a liar. You, if you love God and God loves you, here's the second part of this. The Holy Ghost will keep you no matter what. Give you an example. Got all the, yesterday, a couple of days ago, coming down Broadway, and these people were tussling in line because they were hurrying up, trying to get in the weed store. I'll just leave it at that. Hurrying up to get the weed store. All types of Old people, young people, people who looked like they had money, some people who looked like they were broke, some people who looked like they were tore up from the floor, some people who looked like they had it all together. They were all trying to hurry up and get in the weed store. In 67 years of life, as of the time of this taping, I've never needed weed. I'll say it again. I've never needed weed because I knew God loved me. I love God and the power of the Holy Ghost had been prayed. That's why when we prayed over that baby a few moments ago, some people said, well, we're wasting time doing that for because that baby's going to need prayer. If this world is messed up, Right now, the way it is, think of what it's going to be like when, when Zoe's 20 years old. What is the world going to be like when she's 25 or 30 years old? I dread to think about it as bad as things are today. Let me give you an example. First Union Baptist Church had a basement under the sanctuary. And one Saturday night, I was in there with my father, Michael McKinnon, T.N. Bell, Billy Trawler, Billy Trotter, T.S. Brown, Ernest Knight, these were all the preachers and deacons, and they were just laughing and talking, and then somebody busted in the door, hey fellas, did you hear the news? No, what? So-and-so is on the weed. Now in those days, 
You gotta remember that 60 years ago there was no marijuana stores. If you got caught with marijuana, you were arrested. So to come in and say, this person is on the weed, what do you think those men did? Those men grabbed their hands together in a circle and started praying for the power of the Holy Ghost to come over that man to change him before it was everlasting too late because I still don't care what they say. I still believe weed is a gateway drug to other things. You mean to tell me these people that are dying of fentanyl never smoke weed? These people that are on meth never smoke weed? These people shooting or smoking heroin were never on weed? You mean to tell me these people who are taking all types of oxycontin were never on weed? I know some people may get mad at me for saying this, but those men took their hands and started praying in the name of Jesus. Oh, in the name, Sister Carol, in the name of Jesus. And then I can remember one of them taking their big hand and just popping me in my little big head and said, and Lord, touch this baby, dear Lord. Don't this person never want to find weed in his life. Touch this person that they'll never fall into the, the doldrums of what's going on in the world out there today. Somebody in that circle, I couldn't see who it was. I couldn't see if it was my daddy's hand. I couldn't see if it was my uncle McKinnon's hand. I couldn't see if it was Reverend Knighton's hand. I couldn't tell if it was T.M. Bell's hand. I couldn't tell whose hand it was, but somebody's hand was touching me. Somebody was saying, Lord, keep this boy. Don't let him go the other way. Lord, let him love you all the days of your life. And you know what? That prayer 60 some odd years ago has kept me because I love God. God loves me and I'm kept through the power of the Holy Ghost. That's why I can stand here boldly and say, let the Holy Ghost tell you what to say. Let the Holy Ghost tell you what to do. And you'll be able to take the authority over any situation in your life when the Holy Ghost takes the I see some people looking at their phones and not paying me any attention. That's all right. One of these days, you're going to have a day, you're going to have reason to lift up your heads unto the hills from which cometh your help, knowing that your help cometh from the Lord who created the heavens and the earth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're almost through. We're almost through. We're almost through. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword. No matter how bad it gets, nothing should stop you or separate you from the love of Christ. Nothing. Listen at these things that Paul uses here. Tribulation. Do any of us ever have tribulation in our life where it looks like things are not going to get any better? Do any of us have distress where it looks like we're about ready to go jump off a cliff because it's so bad. Persecution, famine, nakedness, or peril, or sword. And I got one thing for you. Go back to persecution. No matter how bad somebody gets you, you come back and give the Lord some praise. You hear what I'm saying to you today? Last Sunday afternoon, people were wondering why I was crying at the church anniversary. You don't know what we went through just to put that church anniversary together. We went through some things. Persecution from people that had nothing to do with this ministry. But thank God we've got a God that sits high, as the old folks used to say, and looks low. And no matter how bad it gets. Hallelujah. God said, yeah, we're going to let that old hard-headed boy have a good anniversary that day. And the Lord blessed Baruch Atah, our effort, last Sunday afternoon. So what I'm saying again, tribulation, famine. Have you ever been hungry? Nakedness, been outdoors, messed up, or peril, having situations that looks like there's no answer to or sore. Nothing separates us from the love of God. Can it get that bad? Yeah, it can get that bad. Can things get bad? Oh, no, heavens, yes. And here's something I want you to do. Stop saying, never say, can things get that bad? Because things can get that bad. Sometimes people say, and I hear people say all the time, uh, can things get bad? 
Yes, they can get real bad. It looks like nothing great and good is going to happen because things have gotten bad. Don't let things get bad. It's like that story I told you earlier. Not only have I never had any weed, because of that prayer, I've never desired Amen. to have any. That's why you know, some people say, well, I got to say, no, I'm the same discipline, I got to say, I'm the same discipline. We all have different testimonies. Amen. And God loved me, and I knew God loved me, and I loved God. And the Holy Ghost said, he'll never touch marijuana. Do you hear what I'm saying to you today? You know, somebody got quiet on me, but that's okay. Go back to the text one more time. One more time. Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword, nothing shall separate us from the love of God. Verse 36. As it is written, for your sake we are killed when all day long we are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Now, what this is referring to is a prophecy out of the book of Psalms, the 44th number of Psalms. Let's look at verse 17 on. And this has come upon us, but we have not forgotten you, nor have we dealt falsely with your covenant. Our heart has not Turn back, nor have our steps departed from your way, but you have severely broken us in, in the place of jackals. And if you know anything about jackals, jackals, we don't talk about them much because they're sort of in a zoo in America. But if you were to go to certain parts of the Mid Middle East, jackals are put out to some place as like a guard dog because a jackal can outthink a dog, and a jackal can not only decide to attack you and kill you or harm you, but it'll think about what it's doing before it does it, so it becomes a uh, desperately uh, messed up situation dealing with jackals, and covered us with the shadow of death. For we had forgotten the name of our God, or stretched out our hand to a foreign God, would not God, search this out, for he knows the secrets of your hearts. He knows all about you. He knows from whence you came. He knows from whence you're going. He knows everything about you. And that's a wonderful and a magnificent thing that God knows that much about us. Amen. Amen. For your sake, we're killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep for slaughter. So my brothers and my sisters, who shall separate us from the love of God? There's nothing or no one that can separate us. Hebrews, the 12th chapter, verse two says, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him, listen at this, endured the cross, despising the shame, and he has sat down, here we go, now here's a alliteration back to the eighth chapter, verse 44 again, he sat down at the right hand of the throne of God, that's what makes this, uh, makes verse 34 important for us, it is Christ who died, and furthermore, is also risen, whom he, even at the right hand of God, who makes intercessions for us. But then there's a part dealing still in Hebrews 12, 3. For consider him who endured such hostility, and Jesus really went through it for us on that crucifixion on the cross, for sinners against himself, lest you become weary and discouraged in your soul. Meaning, don't get weary, don't be discouraged in your soul. Learn to give it to the Lord. And sometimes it looks like you're not going to make it, but don't be discouraged. Don't be weary in 
your soul. Give it to Jesus, no matter how bad it is. Give it to Jesus, no matter how bad people talk about you like a dog. Give it to Jesus, even when you get weary and discouraged in your soul. Some people say, do you ever get weary? Do you ever get discouraged? No, well, I know how to look to the hills from which cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord who created the heavens and the earth. I know to look because the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want Yahweh Rawi is my shepherd. I shall not want. I know how to look at some of the 24th number of songs. Lift up your hands, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up, ye everlasting door, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the my Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your hands, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up, ye everlasting door, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord God Almighty, Yahweh Tassafah, he is the King of glory. Sometimes I get down, but I know how to go to the 19th number of Psalms and go to Lord, touch my situation. Lord, be there for me in battle. Lord, keep me in battle. There's another song that goes, Lord, take my hands and let me war with thy hands with the power that you give me. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. Oh, Lord, my strength and my redeemer, he that loveth not, knoweth not God, for God is love. So all I'm telling you, my brothers and sisters, who can separate us from the love of God? Nothing on this earth, nobody on this earth, no entity on this earth. This secular culture can't stop me. The world can't stop me. I'm not running after the world. I'm running after Jesus. I'm going to keep my hand in God's unchanging hand. No matter what they say, no matter what they do, they may talk about closing churches down, but I'm I'm going to keep my hand in God's unchanging hand. Why? Because I'm not going to let nothing or nobody separate me from the love of God. Don't let nothing, don't let nobody, don't let no entity, don't let no philosophy, let nothing separate you from the love of God. I'm so glad that my Lord and Savior, he died on that cross. He died on that cross. He died on the cross, like I told you earlier, was put in a borrowed tomb. But guess what? He got up with all power, with all power, with all power in his hands. And according to Hebrews, the 12th chapter, according to Romans, the 8th chapter, he's now at the right hand. He's now at the right hand of the Father. Thank God he's at the right hand intercession for us. Lord, keep them one more day. Lord, bless them one more day. Lord, things may be bad for them, but keep them dear, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Keep them dear, Lord. Keep them dear, Lord. Keep them do, Lord. Nothing. Don't let nothing separate you from the love of God. The doors of the church are now open. Doors of the church are now open. Preacher, what must I do to be saved? Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved. Secondly, if you are depressed, if you're tore up from the floor, give it to Jesus. Maybe you don't have to go around. He loves you. And if you love him, that's what I tell you earlier in the message, the two ghosts, they twin together. It's called chest love. Thank God for chest love. He loves me. I love him. He loves us. Oh, thank God for the love of Christ. And thirdly, if you're looking for a church home and the Lord of the Spirit of the Lord is speaking to you, we'll welcome you with open arms. Come to Jesus. Come. Come to Jesus. Just now. Just now. Come to Jesus. Oh, come to Jesus. Just now. He will save you. He will save you. He will save you. Just now. Just now. He will save you. Oh, he will save you. Just now. Home.
only trust him only trust him just now just now only oh, only trust him just now don't reject him don't reject him don't just now, just now, oh, don't reject him, oh, don't reject him, just now, you see there's none of yet, oh, it's out, okay, amen, I'm just going to go to the next thing here, let me, Sister Shelley.